Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. I'm the content executive for Higher Things. And joining me today is Pastor Brian Wolfmuller, who serves St. Paul in Austin. How are you today? Great. Wake up, everyone. You're going to school. I love the energy. <laughs> um, I need the coffee. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we've been uh, with, with Pastor Wolfmuller tackling just your questions, the things that you want to know. Um, and so since you don't want to hear uh, me talk, I'm just going to ask, uh, Pastor what do I do if I don't want to live forever? Ah, it's a great question. Uh, this is, um, it, okay. So the first thing when it comes to that question to realize is that we all in one way or another want the wrong stuff. So, um, so we're born. Some of the things we want are good. Some of the things we want are bad. Some of the things we want are neutral. Sometimes we want too much of the right thing or not enough of the right thing. So, so part of our Christian life is a battle over our wants, a battle over our desires. And we want to remember that Christianity is not, this is not like, Hey, you should follow Jesus because then he'll give you the carrot of eternal life. No, uh, we follow Jesus. We trust in Jesus because he is the true God who loves us and has given himself up for us. So eternal life, it's not like eternal life is the ends and Jesus is the means. No, Jesus is the end and his life is eternal. And so when he shares his life with us, we live forever. Now, if we say, well, I don't, so I don't want to live forever. It's a good question to say, well, why not? And maybe it's because I get tired, you know, just being awake for like 12 hours in a day. And I can't imagine being awake for 12 million years or something like this. But our ideas of forever are really just ideas of a really long time. We can't sort of set it free from our own temporality. So um, if you don't want to live forever, it's good just to know that, well, um, you don't always get what you want. (laughs) And Jesus will give you eternal life and it'll be good. And when you get there, you'll love it. I remember C.S. Lewis talking about this, maybe in his Weight of Glory or another essay. He says, when I see the pictures of heaven in the Bible, like um, golden streets, he says, that doesn't really appeal to me. I'd rather have kind of a winding dirt path through the forest than a gold street in a city. But that's because my wanting is broken. And whenever I am in the resurrection, that thing that the Lord is giving, I will also recognize as the best. Can you, so I, I love to imagine this. Can, so, so one of the things is in, in the resurrection, not only will we not be able to sin, but we also won't be able to be tempted because all of our desires will be perfected. All of our longing will be perfected. And so there'll be this perfect match between what I desire and what I have, what I long for and what the Lord gives. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. It's, all, it's even hard to imagine. That's, that's a really interesting point. You said our wanting is broken. And so you're right. Some things I want that I definitely shouldn't. And God's very clear in his word. But there are other places where my wants get broken by somebody else's sin just as well. So like I might not want to go to school because not because I don't want to learn, but because I don't want to get bullied. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder how much of, you know, the, the frustration with wanting to live forever is an understanding of, of a, a life that is rooted in sin and, and suffering that comes with it. Mm-hmm. That's right. So so the eternal life really is the deathless life. And so it's, it's life completely expunged from death, completely expunged from sin. And it's almost beyond our comprehension. Uh, I, I was thinking about this the other day because uh, at the deaf church, we were talking about how, you know, in the resurrection, we'll be able to hear, but in a way, all of us, even hearing people are deaf we just as an example, are surrounded by the angels. You and I, Harrison, are surrounded by the angels. The people who are listening to us are surrounded by the angels. And those angels are singing the praises of God, but we just don't have ears to hear it. But in the resurrection, our, our senses will be awakened to all of that glory that's around us. So that no eye has seen, no ear has heard the things that the Lord has in store for those who love them. There's a, the, 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 the joys of that life are almost by definition, incomprehensible to us. We, ju- we just can't get there to the joy of that life. And so 
Uh, and so we know that um, there's good things that are waiting for us that we can't even imagine. And, and, if, and if our imagining, if whatever it is that we imagine about eternal life or whatever it is we imagine about heaven is not, it's, it kind of doesn't appeal to us, then we recognize even how, how broken we are. It's like the person who tastes the finest of wines and thinks it tastes disgusting, right? I mean, this is a, kind of a silly example, but that, that's, the best that it could, that's the best thing you could possibly drink, best thing you could possibly taste, and it doesn't taste good to you. Well, that doesn't mean there's something wrong with the wine. That means there's something wrong with your taste buds. And one of the great things about the resurrection is it's not just God giving us what we want. It's God fixing our wanting so that we can be at last full of those things which are good and best and most beautiful. That's magnificent. First, I'm willing to, to acknowledge that there might be people who do struggle with the greatest wine ever, Mogan David. Um, <laughs> but um, the, the, the idea that we would go based on God's promises is, is a, a good reminder. My kids spend a lot of time asking me about what the resurrection will be like. And they're in so many ways trying to norm the resurrection to their wants right now. And so they want in the resurrection all the time in the world to play Minecraft. And they want in the resurrection um, to be big enough to do the things that they want to do and not be told by mom and dad what they're not allowed to do. Um, but in the same way, um, my perceptions of the resurrection uh, so much just get normed by what I don't want to experience. I don't want to experience suffering and I don't want to experience sin. And I don't want to experience the, the frustration that is being sort of torn between the two wants, the, the wants of old Adam and the wants of the new man. Um, but instead with, with uh, this, we simply have a, a picture of the risen Lord, that this is, this is the thing that we, we have to hang on to, that, that he has conquered death and he has promised to take us there too. Yeah, there, there's a way that the resurrection is described in negative terms for us. There'll be no more tears, no more crying. The Lord will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There's no more death. There's no more sorrow. All the former things are taken away, uh, all, almost because we can't get there otherwise. Like we only can understand it in, in negative terms, the things that are not there, but the things that are there, oh, how, how, pheno how phenomenal. And, um, and, and we realize that that creeps in now, too, to our own lives, that, that I recognize that the things that I want are broken. So, you know, Luther talked about the bondage of the will. We should probably talk about the bondage of the want <laughs> mm. and, uh, and how our, our wants are kind of always drawn to the wrong thing, that that'll be fixed in the resurrection. But already that new life starts to creep in. So when we, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, the Lord is teaching us to desire you know, his name, his kingdom, his will. Those are the things that we ought to want, the things that the Lord wants to give to us. And, and so our wants are being trained for the resurrection uh, in our Christian life. And that's, uh, that's a helpful thing to meditate on. Absolutely. So then if I don't want, according to, to God's promises, then we, we get to hold up our wants and say, is this in line with God's law? But also we get to hear God's gospel. And there, there our wants are normed to things that are called good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and it turns out of all, <laughs> of all things, most surprisingly that the Lord wants us, <laughs> that he desires us as his children, that he wants our life to never end and be eternal. And so when we pray, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. We're, we are admitting in fact, that his will is a good and gracious will for us. And so it could be, I, I don't want to live forever, but Lord, not my will, but your will be done because your will is best. My will is broken. Your will is perfect. And your will is also for me. That's magnificent. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. All right. Thanks for joining us today on the Drive to School podcast. Like, subscribe, share, uh, and uh, tune in next time. Thanks so much.